Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to talk about Paris. Paris in classic romantic films that is. Much like a video I posted last summer dedicated to Italy in classic romantic comedies since it's now spring, at least in the northern hemisphere that is, I thought it would be quite fitting to talk about a city that is quite emblematic when it comes to movies in general, but especially in romantic films, even though as we know now it's quite impossible to travel, much like the quote from Casablanca will always have Paris, at least will always have it through movies. So to change a little bit the pace with my latest videos, I thought it would be a fun idea to list seven of my favorite romantic films that are set in one of the most again beautiful cities in the world and i hope as always that you will enjoy this one as always too with this kind of videos i won't be ranking the movies i will be talking about them instead in chronological order which makes more sense to me as we may all know paris has a long and very fruitful connection with movies it was the capital for many many decades especially in the 19th century in the 20th century too. Well, it was the place where on the 22nd of March 1895, the first projected film Workers Leaving the Lumiere Factory in Lyon by the Lumiere Brothers. In movies, Paris has almost invariably represented a very cosmopolitan city, bursting with cultural activity, eternally associated with fashion, glamour, intellectualism and art. It has become a symbol for all those things and like anything that becomes iconic is also subject of many cliches because as we know romantic movies in general tend to present an idealized version normally of the setting in which it takes place that is something that i mentioned too when we talked about italy obviously the italy that you get to see or the paris that you get to see is different from some stereotypes that we see in many of the films again that we'll discuss today but still i think that the magic of the place and the allure of Paris is something that it's not at all overrated. But again, no more introduction. Let's go discuss seven of my favorite classic romantic films set in Paris. The first movie that I wanted to include in this video is The Merry Widow. That is the version released in 1934 and directed by the incomparable Ernst Lubitsch. In his usual wit, he famously said, I've been to Paris, France, and I've been to Paris, Paramount. I think I prefer Paris, Paramount. I found that quote very funny. And I have to tell you that in this case, for The Merry Widow, we will be visiting Paris MGM though. As many of you would know too, The Merry Widow is based on an operetta with beautiful music from composer Franz Lehár. And in case you're not that familiar with Ernst Lubitsch musicals, which came in the early years of sound, movies like The Love Parade, Monte Carlo, The Smiling Lieutenant, or One Hour With You helped define what the genre would become years later. Lubitsch navigates to perfection that sense of sense sentimentalism but also a sardonic view. So again, The Merry Widow is in many cases equal parts satire as it is a romantic musical in this case. And when it comes to depicting Paris, he was one of the best at it. As you may also know too, many of his movies were set in Europe, but out of all the places, Paris I think was practically omnipresent. The story in this case takes place again between the fictional country of Marshovia and Paris. We have on the one hand and playboy Captain Danilo, incarnated by Maurice Chevalier, who is assigned to court and marry widow Madame Sonia, played by Jeanette MacDonald, before she leaves the country and takes her fortune with her. Featured in this operetta, we see the Paris of Maxime's, the Can Can, and risque but exciting encounters. Again, this movie is an absolute pleasure to watch, and I've seen also the later version of this movie, the one released in 1952, 
starring Lana Turner and Fernando Lamas and I have yet to watch though the version that it was released in 1925 starring John Gilbert but out of the ones that I've seen I think that Ernst Lubitsch version is absolutely divine really mind you I think it's worth watching Fernando Lama sing I think he had a terrific voice it's not often discussed really nowadays it's truly really worth watching but if you have Lubitsch if you have Janet McDonald you can't go wrong with that another movie that is one of my absolute favorite romantic screwball comedies in this case is Midnight released in 1939 and directed by Mitchell Leeson I talked about this movie in a video dedicated to fairy tales and Billy Wilder because Midnight as some of you would know was written by Bill Wilder and Charles Brackett Claudette Colbert who was by the way born in Paris. Donna Michi are the fantastic protagonist of this movie. Paris in this case is more again of a cosmopolitan sophisticated background. In Midnight we see the opulent part of Paris, the Ritz, but also the Paris of the Bistros and the taxi drivers. Midnight is a lovely farce. It is again one of my favorite classic romantic comedies that I got the fortune to discover in a little movie theater in Barcelona called Melie. They would screen, especially during the summer, many classic movies and some of them I had never seen, not even on TV. And this movie, Midnight, was one of those films and I was forever enamored. So if you haven't yet discovered Midnight, I highly highly encourage you to do so. The next movie that it's one of my favorites and it's also released in 1939 and it was also directed by Ernst Lubitsch, Come For Me, is Ninochka. I absolutely adore this movie and particularly the character played by Greta Garbo, Ninochka, absolutely fantastic. If you have seen the movie, you'll know that it's a mix of a political satire and a romantic comedy. Can this work? Yes, if you have Billy Wilder and Charles Braggett again writing its screenplay. It was the movie that was famously advertised as the one in which Garbo laughs as her first comedy role. We also have here a wonderful troupe of character actors that we would see often in Lou Beach movies such as The Shop Around the Corner or To Be or Not To Be, two of my favorite Lou Beach movies by the way. We are shown yet again a cosmopolitan sophisticated view of Paris obviously from the perspective of a Soviet Union agent. It's amplified to its maximum expression. Ninochka has terrific lines in this movie, especially the ones aimed at Melvin Douglas. But there is a quote that is super funny when she's visiting the Eiffel Tower for the first time and she makes the remark, I do not deny its beauty, but it's a waste of electricity. In this movie also Paris represents a transformation, something we'll see in many romantic movies in which what goes on in Paris completely changes the views of the protagonist. Really truly my favorite moments of Ninochka are the ones involving Greta Garbo. I think she is terrific here. Ninochka has to be one of my absolute favorite classic Hollywood movies and also characters in movie history. And we're going with the fourth favorite, yet another classic that I cannot miss. I'm sorry, I cannot not mention Casablanca when it comes to favorite movies set in Paris. I know that in this case Paris only appears in the movie in a few flashback scenes but the magnetism of Paris I think permeates the whole movie to the point where we have that glorious line will always have Paris. I mean there's not much that I think I need to say about Casablanca. We all know that it stars Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Berman, Paul Henry and that we're exposed here to Paris and it's immediate Nazi occupation in 1940. So again, I think it's another one of those movies that have increased the attraction for Paris and there are a few scenes but very powerful in terms of the story that are really important to cement the nostalgia for this city. And of course, if Ninochka had a wonderful cast of character actors, 
I mean, Casablanca has Claude Rains. Name a movie that is not improved by Claude Rains. Dolly Wilson, Conrad Veidt, Sidney Greenstreet, Peter Lorre, and really everyone who appears in Casablanca is terrific. Again, I don't think I need to make my case for this movie any longer. Casablanca is truly a testament of how beautifully movies were made back then. Another beautifully made movie and also set in Paris is inevitably an American in Paris, which shows us in this case the city of light immediately after World War II has ended. And it is truly an excuse to showcase the fantastic music created by George and Ira Gershwin and Gene Kelly shows us what it means to be really fascinated and really charmed by Paris. And although I think the story for An American in Paris is quite flimsy in favor again of the music, of the visual aspect of the movie, still is a truly charming film. As many of you would know, as I made very clear in a video dedicated to Gene Kelly, growing up he was one of my favorite actors, he still is, and there are, in my case, other movies that have taken over in terms of my favorite Gene Kelly films, but still I think again An American in Paris is a favorite when it comes to movies depicting what loving Paris feels like. An American in Paris again represents an idyllic view of the city, of its cafes, of its lively neighborhoods, of jazz. We get to see also the artist side of Paris. We get to be exposed to many French Impressionist painters. Jean Kelly himself was a self-declared Francophile. He had studied French and he also declared that Paris was one of his favorite cities and again it shows his work in collaboration with all the professionals in this movie starting with Vincente Minnelli its director is absolutely outstanding and it still stands as one of those musicals those innovative musicals that really hoped to transcend the medium. The next movie I would like to talk about is none other than Sabrina, released in 1954 and directed by Billy Wilder. It stars Audrey Hepburn, who I think became the face for romantic comedy set in Paris. She starred in so many, but out of all of them, I will be talking about two in today's video. One of them is Sabrina, a movie that she did right after the tremendous success of Roman Holiday, which we also discussed in the video dedicated to romantic movies set in Italy. Again, another idyllic romantic setting for another fairy tale like romantic comedy. As you may know though, Paris also in Sabrina really only appears in a few scenes, but also much in the case of Casablanca, the idea of Paris the idea of being in Paris is something that is present throughout the movie. The screenplay was based, in this case, in a play called Sabrina Fair. In this case, we go back again to Paris Paramount and we get to see the Paris of La Vie en Rose for this retelling of the Cinderella story again. This film also began the lifelong partnership, if you will, between Givenchy and Audrey Hepburn. The dresses as you know in this movie are absolutely glorious. Sabrina, I have to say, is a beautiful movie that is totally owned by obviously Audrey Hepburn. She's absolutely terrific here and that's the charm of Sabrina. A delightful kind of movie. And last but not least, another movie starring Audrey Hepburn that incidentally I just happened to discover and I can't believe it took me so long to watch How to Steal a Million, released in 1966 and directed by William Wyler. And in this case, this is a movie that was really, really shot in Paris, France, not Paris Paramount, not Paris MGM or Paris Warner Brothers. And that's the way to end this video with a movie that actually shows you Notre Dame, the Ritz, and you have again, beautiful Audrey Hepburn, Peter O'Toole, fantastic actor with great chemistry with Audrey Hepburn. We have Eli Wallach and also a terrific troupe of character actors and directed again by William Wyler, who directed Audrey in her first 
Hollywood movie, Roman Holiday, and directed her in this fantastic, super charming, romantic comedy involving art heist. You know, if you have seen the Noir Vember series I made, that I love heist movies. Doesn't matter if they're romantic or noir movies. I love a good heist movie and the reason why I wanted to include this film is because out of all the movies Audrey Hepburn shot in Paris or with Paris as a setting I wanted to include another movie in which she would be paired with an actor that in this case is younger to compensate things a little bit. This movie is pretty much an excuse to see the skills and the charming performances again of Audrey Hepburn and Peter O'Toole and also the rest of the cast to see some really 60s in this case fantastic outfits and accessories and cars also in this movie I'm not a master I couldn't help but notice that so many cars in this movie would be beautiful and also we get to see paintings in this case we get to see more modern artists also there's a little scene in which Audrey Hepburn is reading a French translation of the Alfred Hitchcock mastery magazine and it's really a charming nod to Hitchcock movies I mean this movie is a feast for the eyes really that's all for today's video let me know in the comments down below which classic romantic movies set in Paris are your favorite. I know that I left out quite a few. I hope to talk about Paris again in subsequent videos and French movies too. I think that would be really interesting. And in any case, as always, I hope that you stay safe, that you take care and that I get to see you all soon in another video. Bye! Places like Maxime's in the famous I'm going to Maxime's